Hey, welcome to the customer value journey worksheet and training. This value journey worksheet is important because it helps you identify the steps from when a customer or a parent of a potential student, when they first learn about your school, all the way up until the very last step where they enroll their child. This is important because you don't want to create Facebook ads, for example, that just straight up ask parents to enroll their child right away. It's like asking for marriage on the first date. There are steps that need to be taken uh, an engagement that needs to be that needs to happen with these parents with your target demographic before you can ask for the sale before you can ask for the tour or walkthrough or even the enrollment itself so we're going to go through this training um, this can be a little bit confusing but i i think after a couple slides it's going to be pretty self-explanatory so uh, again, this is the value customer value journey worksheet and training. So let's get started. Uh, why we do this? We can't optimize what you haven't documented. And what that means is you can't optimize or, or make better or uh, to change to improve the stats of a step in your funnel if you have not documented that funnel, if you don't know the steps that your demographic, your parents are going through to find you or to enroll their child, uh, you can't optimize that funnel if you don't know exactly what's going on. So you can't optimize what you haven't documented. That's just a fancy way of saying, just know the steps in your funnel, know what steps people are taking from when they first see your ad or where they first learn about you all the way up until enrollment. Second thing, sequence is critical. Um, and we're going to talk about that in a little while. You can't, you know, and this one's pretty obvious. Like I said, you can't ask for marriage on the first date. You can't ask for marriage and then, you know, go on a second date. And then on the third date, you know, meet the parents. And then, you know, you can't go backwards. So the sequence is critical. You have to go from, you know, step one is engaging a target demographic. Step two is giving them something of value. Step three, blah, blah, blah. Step four, step five, step six. Step seven is asking for the enrollment or asking for the tour. And this is a flagship framework. And I'm going to say that about a couple different tools and trainings that we do. I think there's three or four that count as the flagship frameworks. And literally everything else we do will reference uh, not only this document, but a couple other ones. Uh, another one is the customer avatar canvas. We can't begin to create a Facebook ad or um, a lead page or, or funnel if we don't exactly know um, what that funnel is or what steps our, our demographic is taking to, to get to the end result. Uh, so a little bit confusing. It'll make more sense in, in a minute. So uh, the principles are, uh, number one, simple wins. Um, big wins can be good. Small wins are good. Complicated is never good. Keep it simple. And again, that'll make sense, make more sense in, in a few minutes. Second principle is human to human. We've gone over this in the customer avatar canvas. You're not talking to um, dedicated dad or stay at home mom, Sarah. You're talking to the actual parent of you know, a potential student. Um, you're, you're talking to the actual human being and your funnel is for a human being it's not for a computer you know it's not for a software it's for an actual human being and the more we remember that the easier it is going to be to design our funnel to design our ads um, to to get that that goal and result um, and at the bottom here you can see my nose i don't care what you sell or how you sell it all of us are in the business of selling human-based solutions to our fellow humans. And this is relevant, obviously, with schools, but, you know, also software programs. Who uses software programs as humans? Who's going to buy a software program? A human. Even if it's, you know, an AI or even if it's running automatically in the background, a human still has to initiate that purchase or, you know, uh, you still have to talk to another human for, for that sale. So always human to human. And when you remember that, um, it, it makes things a lot easier. It makes your ads perform better because people will see right through if you're just trying to uh, sell, 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 sell. 
So this is essentially what um, the value journey looks like. Uh, start at, at the awareness stage where people, they are just learning who you are. Engage, they engage with your school, whether that's, you know, clicking on an ad or seeing an ad. Uh, subscribe, they can subscribe to a newsletter or they go to your blog and, and read. Convert, maybe they, um, this is probably not the stage where they enroll their student. This is likely where they book a tour. The stage excite, they're excited about the tour. The ascend stage is they're finally learning more about your school. They're about ready to get on the tour. Advocate, this is where they tell their other parent friends um, about your school. This is the word of mouth. And then promote. Uh, this is where they might help you promote your school. Uh, but the ascend stage is, is the most important. So we're going to get started here. And like I said, it's a little bit confusing at first, but we take you step by step, so it's going to be super easy. Step one is drawing the framework, and this worksheet is in your resources section, so just print this out. I wouldn't, I wouldn't advise drawing on this um, online. I, I think you should probably print it out and then handwrite some notes. So drawing the framework and if you're doing this in a group setting feel free to draw this on a whiteboard so everybody can kind of see it look at it and then you guys can just work from one template step two is brainstorming stages um, right now you are here this is the awareness stage but we don't want to start at the awareness stage it's like pouring water in a bucket with holes there's just so many ideas um, we actually want to start at the end result. We want to start at the end result and work our way back. And our end result is actually not where it's the promote stage. It's actually the ascend stage. So if you go back up and look at this graph here, the ascend stage, this is actually the, the end result. Their child is enrolled in the school. They're happy. This is the end result that we want. You're happy because you have an enrolled student. The parent is happy because their child is enrolled in a good school and is really happy. So we're going to start at the ascend stage. This is really important. Okay, question one for the ascend stage. And if you forget these things, this PowerPoint will also be uploaded into the documents and resources section. So you can have this open uh, on another screen and then be jotting down your ideas um, either on a whiteboard or on your sheet. So. Question one, for the Ascend stage, what is our core flagship offer and how will we continue to deliver value after the sale is made, after the enrollment is made? So what is your offer? What is your main offer? What do you offer parents and students that other schools don't? And how will you continue to deliver value to your students and parents even after those kids are enrolled? So be thinking about that. That goes in the Ascend stage. And if you're doing this up on a whiteboard, if you remember from the customer avatar journey, we have sticky notes up on the whiteboard uh, if you're doing this uh, with, with a group of people. So um, add your sticky notes. So then we're at number five. We're going backwards. Remember, we're starting from the end result. Seven and eight are just word of mouth and you know your, your, your students and your parents promoting it uh, to, to other people. So seven and eight are very important in the value journey, but six is essentially the end result. Six is a happy enrollment. Uh, so we're going backwards, we're going five. Question number two, number five is the excite stage. Question number two, what are some of the aha moments that transform our products or service, your school, from a nice to have into a must have? What differentiates your school from another school and why do you think parents and children must go to your school over another school down the road. Even if that other school down the road is a little bit cheaper and can get your student in, you know, maybe a year earlier. Why should parents and students want to go to your school? What would make them want to wait for your school or even pay a little bit more or, you know, drive a little bit further to go to your school versus another school? What are some of those aha moments? And this is the excite stage because what those aha moments should excite that parent and child. So what are some of those aha moments that transform your school 
from nice to have into must have. You know, we must go here. My child must go here. And then the ahs wonder and then the ha is understanding. So they're wondering why they should go to your school. And then the ha is understanding, oh, this is why. So again, that goes in the excite stage. Um, this is just some examples that are here. Oh, whoops. So on Twitter, for example, um, when you sign up for Twitter for a very first account, uh, they ask you to follow 30 people. And this is so you can see a feed of news and updates and also so Twitter can send you more people and things that they think you're interested in based on who you decide to connect with uh, for these the first 30 people. So this is the aha of Twitter. It's getting them to follow more people. Um, an aha for there's this newsletter, a constant contact. Um, it's let's build your newsletter template. This is a feature that this service, this product or service offers um, that maybe another software doesn't offer. This is exciting to people because it's interactive and just like the Twitter, this is something that's not offered by any other service. And this tells people, you know, I'm signing up for this and they're already giving me value. They're already they're already helping me build a newsletter template. Like I'm going to hit the ground running. Another example, um, this Tesla, if you're going to own this car, you need to know how to perform a launch. Um, this car goes seven, this ha it has 762, sorry, horsepower, zero to 60 in 2.8 seconds. Why would you want to buy this car over, let's say, a, a Ford Fiesta? And nothing against Ford Fiestas, they're probably great cars, but this car, a Ford Fiesta does not go zero to 60 in 2.8 seconds. This car is fast, this car is exciting. Why would people opt to go to your school, this fast, exciting car, versus, you know, the Ford Fiesta? school. Um, just some more examples here. iPhone, perfect example. Why would somebody spend a thousand dollars plus on an iPhone when they can get a, a Nokia or, you know, maybe even an Android? I don't know how much Androids are. I'm sure they're just as expensive, but why would somebody opt for one more luxurious seeming thing over another? What features does it give? What's your aha moment? So be thinking about that. And if you're working on a whiteboard, you can put those sticky notes up. <clears throat> and then we're going to step four, which is the convert stage. So this convert stage can also, I, th I think I had mentioned, it could be them booking a tour, I, I believe, um, or you know maybe purchasing something else you're offering or signing up for an after school class. Um, so how can we get our prospect to make a micro commitment, a tour, an in-person tour that gives us the opportunity to deliver the aha moment? And I think that's pretty self-explanatory. So methods of commitment are time and money. With uh, an in-person tour, obviously that's time. Entry point offers establish micro commitments that convert strangers into friends. You might not have an entry point offer because schools will you know, unless you're doing like an after school program or like a weekend program that kids can kind of try out or, you know, perhaps you can have the child come in and sit through a half a day class or something like that. But this might not necessarily be relevant for a school and entry point offer. A lot of times for, for other companies, for e-commerce companies, it's like a free gift or, you know, uh, another company, it's like a free newsletter or a free ebook or, you know, something else of value that you can offer uh, in advance um, and that establishes a micro commitment to that customer um, that converts a stranger into friends. Again, we're not asking for marriage on a first date. So when you're asking for marriage on a first date, you're a stranger essentially. But if you go on five dates, you're no longer a stranger, you're a friend. You're not ready to get married yet, but you're a friend. You're no longer that stranger. So be thinking if there's any entry point offers that you can you can offer to to parents that work as micro commitments that can convert some of these stranger parents into familiar parents. And then just some examples. Um, let's see, Help Scout offers 
free 15 day trial. Um, a lot of these, oops, sorry, a lot of these just offer free trials as their, um, their, their uh, value in advance. So a big tip, uh, don't sample splinter. What that means is guitar picks and candle wicks. We like to use um, this, this uh, example. If you're selling guitar picks or candle wicks, those are very, very niche products. And it's very likely that someone who has a hobby of candle making or playing guitar or selling guitar will buy these two products. They'll be very interested in these two products. So don't sample, don't just give them for free two or three guitar picks or candle wicks, but give them one portion of the entire thing. Don't give them the, the candle jar and the wax and everything else and the scents. Just give them the wick. Just splinter off the original offer to, to send them, to give them one small portion. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, um, you know, just, just write to us in the background or we can go over this more on uh, our, our Q&A call. But splintering, not sampling. Uh, a la carte services. And these are not necessarily relevant for schools, but I hope it kind of clears up what this means is steam cleaning $20 off or professional whiteboard video $5 off just make an offer basically that a parent can't refuse offer something in advance that will turn them from a stranger to a friend um, and that, that could still even be a tour but you can offer you know refreshments or if you have, like I said, after school or weekend programs, offer a free after school or, or weekend program or offer, you know, one day free where the child can actually come in and sit with the class or, you know, do an activity with the class and the parent can be there also. But offer something of value. Try to think of something of value that would excite parents and kids um, to want to go to your school. And then remember, the job of the convert stage isn't yet to close the sale. The job is to get a first date and set up an exciting aha moment. You want that first date, that tour, or you know that free session or, or free whatever, so parents and kids can say, ah, aha. That's why this school is what it is. That's why this school is luxury. That's why this school is so much better. So moving on to step three in the subscribe stage, what valuable chunk of content can we offer in exchange for their contact information and permission to follow up? This will probably not be a piece of content, although it definitely could be. You know, if you have a free book or a newsletter or report or, you know, test stats or anything that you can give parents of value so they can see more, learn and see more about you and your school. If you can offer that, um, that's definitely a great idea. I know with schools, it's a little bit tough to offer, you know, valuable chunks of content because, you know, they just, they come in and they take a tour and you talk to them and then it's basically, you know, do you like our school enough or, you know, what can we do to, to get you to sign up? So if you can offer a valuable chunk of content in exchange for the contact information and permission to follow up, and now you already have these people's contact information, I'm guessing, if they have booked a tour. Um, and even if they've signed up for your email newsletter, even if they signed up for, you know, uh, updates on, on enrollments and things like that, chances are you already have their contact information. So I like to use this stage as verbally setting a commitment to follow up. In this stage, if, if you have a parent on a tour and they're about to be finished, you can, instead of offering that valuable chunk of content that you may or may not have, you can instead say, hey, I really enjoyed our tour. I hope you liked it. If you have any questions, please let us know. But in the meantime, do you mind if we set up a call for Thursday of next week um, so we can chat a little bit further about this. No pressure, but I would like to, you know, follow up with you to, to see what your thoughts are and see where you are in, in terms of, of maybe enrolling. Um, and that gives, that essentially you're asking for the sale without asking for the sale. Um, but you want to make that 
contact because you don't want people to leave and then you know that's it so instead of a valuable chunk of content you can make a verbal commitment um and permission to follow up uh in the subscribe stage especially if you don't have any valuable like a lot of times this is just an ebook or you know it's it's a it's a free 15 day trial and, and things like that which is might not necessarily be relevant for schools and i think it's going to give some examples yes downloadable report gated video series a mini class or webinar registration if you have a webinar, fantastic. If you have a downloadable report, fantastic. If there's anything possible that you can give them in exchange, once they're done with the tour, you can say, hey, you know, watch this webinar um, or, you know, download this report. Here's more information. Then definitely do that. If you don't have anything, then make a verbal commitment to touch base and to call them on a certain day, a certain time. Make that appointment right away. Um, again, this is, um, this is for a free webinar. These are just some more examples of, um, high value content, downloadable report, and this is the same, same slide. Um, 75% off. Again, this is valuable discount. You can't really offer a valuable discount with a school. So this is not necessarily relevant, but you get the idea. It's offering people something of value. So you are um, at stage two now, working backwards again, question five. What content can we leverage to turn a glance into a stare? What content or what features, features, because it might not be content, you're a school, uh, what features or content can we leverage to turn a glance, a tour, into a stare? What features can we leverage to turn a tour into an enrollment content marketing uh, again this might not be very relevant but if you have a blog on your website or landing pages it's very important to keep up with it not only for seo but a lot of times you know parents want to read your entire website they want to know like who you are what's going on before they trust you with their child so I think having a blog and having content on your website, although might not necessarily help for, you know, getting new leads and new sales, it certainly doesn't hurt. And it, it lets parents see into your school a little bit more and it gives them a better sense of trust. So those two types of content are information and entertainment. Um, information products, you know, top five thing, or, you know, what you can do if your kid is having trouble sleeping or having trouble concentrating. And then entertainment, you know, top things to do with the kids over the holiday break. It's about the customer. It's about the parent, not the school. As much as we want to think that our marketing is about our product, it's not. Your marketing is about the parents and the children, not about your school. And these are just some examples of content that you can take a look at if you like. So if you need more engaging content ideas, um, just answer questions. Uh, gather a list of frequently asked questions from your, your parents. Um, and then, you know, create videos or, or write blog posts. And again, these are just some, there's a video that you can watch. And these are just some more examples of engaging content that you can add. Uh, if you don't, like I said, have a blog on your website already, it's never too late to start one. And I think it's really, really important, not only for SEO, but to set yourselves up as thought leaders and professionals in your space. And you also want to make sure that these parents are, are you know, trusting you as much as possible. And they, you know, you, you do put up information on, on your site that you're willing to give away for free in exchange for, you know, uh, tour bookings. Um, so this case study I won't go over here um, just to save some time, but if you like to or if you want to, you know, read this on your own, that's fine. It's just if you Google wine for 20 guests, um, if you, you click over to this total wine um, calculator, it is just a really handy calculator telling you number, how many uh, guests are going to be at your event, how many hours, and then it spits out how many bottles of wine you need. Um, and it's really cool. And it's, it was probably really easy to set up, but it's engaging. 
um, and it's helpful. So this is something of value that Total Wine has offered to um, their potential customers for free. So that was two, and then we are on step one. So question number six is how do qualified prospects find out about your brand? How do parents with children in your target demographic find out about your school? And they find out about you on Facebook ads, Google ads, Instagram, YouTube, uh, Facebook, um, your Facebook page. And again, down here, don't make it complicated. Just stick to the big four. These are the big four. In this course, we're going to be going over Facebook ads, um, but we'll also go over Instagram as well because Instagram is owned by Facebook. So we'll go over those two things. Uh, and then we, in an additional course, I think we'll go over Google ads and YouTube ads, but we're not reviewing Google and YouTube right now. We're just going to do um, Facebook and Instagram. So stick to these four. This is where the majority of people are, and this is how they're going to find out about your brand, about your school. So that was step one. Sorry, let me get rid of my notifications here. Okay, and then question seven, which is the advocate stage. How will we encourage our happy and successful parents to say nice things about our school? So you can either, I'm not necessarily sure as a school what you can offer. Um, this is really easy for e-commerce brands um, because you can offer free stuff, right? Like Beachbody will give away like a free t-shirt. Um, I think if possible, you could do something like a raffle. You could say, you know, hey, leave a really good review on our website or leave a review on our website or Yelp or Google, uh, and then we'll automatically enter you in a drawing to win, you know, this gift basket or something like that. So you can entice people. Um, this is t-shirts are magical. Is This is for, um, this is an e-commerce. So um, this isn't really relevant. Or you could offer t-shirts. You could offer, you could give away a free t-shirt if you have a nice design or something like that. But I think... In exchange for a really good review, especially a video testimonial, you could definitely offer, you know, put people in a drawing for some something free, movie tickets or, um, yeah, like a, like a gift basket or, or something like that. So that's the advocate stage, stage seven. And then question eight, how will you turn your best customers into your marketing partners? How will you turn your parents into your marketing partners. How can you get your current parents to advocate for you and to bring you more students? So um, a lot of these are probably not relevant, but I left them up here because this is essentially the customer value journey. Um, it's just that this is probably more for e-commerce than for schools, but it's still very relevant. Building brand promoters, referral programs. Um, if you're in a town with a lot of kids, Say, you know, hey, if, if parents, you know, if, if you guys know anybody that has uh, kids between this age and, and this age, uh, send them our way. And for every referral you give us, we'll give you something. Um, it's not probably going to have to be anything regarding the school. It's not like you can offer a child like a free month or whatever. It's going to have to be something external. Um, but try to figure out a way to incorporate a referral program. Um, affiliates, there's more e-commerce, internal champions have, you know, your best parents uh, record video testimonials for you. Um, and then value added resellers is like, how can you make sure that those parents are reselling your product, your school? And then that goes in step eight. So again, don't forget, we're starting at step six is the ascend and then we're working backwards. And then figuring out step seven and step eight is how can you use your current parents, current students to get more business. Step three is document your value journey. So print out that sheet or put it up on the whiteboard and then you can either put up the sticky notes or you can handwrite it uh, or you can put it, um, you can just type it out right online. On, I think the worksheet is editable. editable. So you should be able to just do it there. But uh, I think it's a lot easier if you just do it uh, by hand and then maybe take a picture of it. So then the goal, um, document one customer value journey for each avatar persona. So by this point, you should have already watched the customer avatar 
uh, worksheet and training you should have already created between three and five customer avatars and personas. So go back through for each avatar and persona, go back through and create this value journey specifically for that person. How does dedicated dad find out about your school? You know, we're starting here, but you know, just for the sake of an example, how is he finding out about your school? How does he choose to engage? You know, he subscribes, that's great. He signs up for a tour, he goes in for a tour. What is dedicated dad excited about? What is he excited about that's different than stay at home mom excited about? And it might be the same thing, but they might be excited about it for different reasons. Um, and then the ascend, that's when they enroll. Um, and then what is that aha moment? for dedicated dad versus stay at home mom, Sarah? What are their aha moments? Um, and if they're the same, they're the same. Um, chances are they're probably a little bit different. They have different goals. Um, and then there's there's a reason why they, you know, they want or that they see value in these different things. So that's it. That's the customer value journey worksheet and training. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, this is in the um, this is in the well, worksheets and resources section. And this says um, I'm collecting. I'm obviously not collecting them. This is only if we were doing it in person. If you are doing this in person with your team, have everybody write down their answers on the printed out sheet. Have them take a picture, and then you have the main person, the leader collect those so then you can keep track so then you can use those for your marketing efforts so if you're having everybody do this together print it out have everyone write down those steps and then collect them that's why it says here so that you're going to collect them um because you're going to need those when you start marketing so if you have any questions let us know um but that's it thank you